I've got this beautiful man here, Johan. And uh, <laughs> totally randomly, I, I found this guy on Instagram. And, and as soon as I saw, saw his page, I started you know, scrolling through and, and seeing what's up. But uh, one of the key things I found is that uh, with, with Johan, the thing that sort of drew me to him was he's this powerful dude and he's, he like, he comes across as this, you know, real masculine dude. But the, the more you sort of dive in and see what he is, he's really here to, to bring some really cool shit to the world. And he's also... I don't know, I was sort of fucking annoyed at the same time because he's that dude where you look at, you're like, fuck, I want to look like this guy. And he's got like, you know, he's a good looking dude, he's powerful, he's got, you know, beautiful women around him. But but then when, when you, you know, when when you see what it, what he's really expressing out to the world, you can really see he's, he's here to do some good and you can tell he's got a beautiful heart. So... You know, I wanted to talk to you, man, and just see what you're all about and, and what's happening inside your soul. Oh, wow. Thank you, brother. Thanks for that beautiful reflection. And uh, I, I'm so glad that you are, and we are here having this conversation that you did find me and we found each other, you know. And um, yeah, brother, it's, it's beautiful to be putting out that vibration into the world. I think the world really is is yearning for it the men are waking up you know our women are there's a lot of them awakened women and when the feminism is awakening and i think us men it's time for us to really to meet them with our your whatever we call it divine masculine or or new masculine or the space where we go from being you know in the knowing and and sort of being doing this old pattern into being in discovery being who we get to now be and not being afraid of that transition and really welcoming the feminine to to guide us also as well as uh, and not giving up our strength and power and our, our presence and not becoming victims but rather really meeting this 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 moment right moment to moment just daring to be in discovery and i think that now is that time yeah. And we have the means now, right? We have the internet. We can connect. You're in Australia. I'm here in LA. And we're talking and we're sharing and we're connecting. And I really, I'm talking about a thing called the quantum container, which is when the intentions align and we can be in, in contact like this, massive change happens. We might as well be sitting in the same room. The information happens, right? And then... Yeah. It's so I'm just really excited about what's going on on the planet right now and to be doing the work and to be sharing and, and, and gathering brothers and men and educating each other on how to show up differently and make an impact and be in our hearts and have fun and, and, and get the feminine to, to, to support us and to trust us because we're being completely open, vulnerable and authentic moment to moment. Yeah, absolutely, man. And you know what? I mean, you sound so wise and you've obviously been through, you know, quite a journey. You can, you can always tell when you're, you know, whether it's on the internet or whether you, you come across someone day to day who people who have had quite a, quite a fucking journey, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm sort of assuming that you don't come from this world of, of talking about quantum fucking masculine and shit like that so where where uh you know where i mean i had a look at you you were doing acting and stuff like that but i'd love to hear man like where you came from and and uh you know and and what what sort of led you to to sort of dive into this you know beautiful life of, of uh you know mindfulness and and you know breathing techniques and this sort of stuff so you know Tell us, tell us about the masterful Johan. <laughs> well, I was born in Estonia at the time of Soviet Union, you know, and the religion there basically in Soviet Union was communism. So you, uh, and obviously we, everyone hated that religion. Well, not everyone, but most people. But there wasn't any sort of patterning, spiritual patterning, which is interesting because still people are yearning for it, right? You're always asking that question. And then when I moved to Finland with my mom when I was 10, I was kind of thrust into a very different environment. And uh, I felt you know, very separated from my family because they were behind the Iron Curtain. And 
And I was, you know, pretty scared, depressed, um, lonely kid um, in a new environment. And we kept moving around and there was a lot of bullying and, and just feeling really alone for a long time. And then when I was 14, um, I discovered meditation just kind of randomly by myself. I was sitting in my room one day, one evening, and I was just at night kind of sitting in my bed. And, and I, I don't remember exactly how I was like, I'm going to try to meditate, but I, that's what I did. And I remember closing my eyes and sitting there and I and experienced this feeling, this inner world, where I was like kind of like becoming smaller and smaller and dropping and dropping. And I was like, what is happening? And then I kept doing that. And then about a month or so down the road, I had an out-of-body experience where I literally flew out of my body, through the wall, into a tree outside, flew like a couple of miles that way, a couple of miles back, and then back through the tree into my body. And I was just like, whoa, what the <laughs> hell? Yeah. And, um, and that was a big moment for me. And also, at the same time, I, I uh, reached out to my dad who was living in the States. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking for some books to read. And, and he, um, he was like, you should read three, there's three books. One of them was Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, Bhagavad Gita, and then also Dhammapada. And I remember uh, Lao Tzu was the first one I read, Tao Te Ching, and I was just reading it and crying and laughing at the same time because my <laughs> spirit recognized this ancient truth. And, and, um, that was really a huge point for me when I was met with something really greater than myself that explained something in such powerful terms that my spirit understood it. And my mind was just like, I don't even fully understand this, but I'm just resonating on such a deep level with something. And then... And dude, this is when you're 14. This is when I'm 14, yeah. Um, and, um, and then I came to visit my dad in the States. My dad had moved to the States when I was 16 and, um, we, I didn't really grow up with him and, and, um, and he, uh, <laughs> he, the, one of the first places he took me, him and my uncle was Topanga. And then we're in Topanga and one of the nights he's like, uh, and we're at a, not far from where I live now, actually. And he's, uh, we're at our friend's property. He's got this big property on top of the mountain. And he's like, listen, I think it's time for your initiation. And I was like, I mean, what are you talking about? He's like, here's some mushrooms. And, um, and so I, yeah, so I'm 16, right? And so I'm by myself on a mountaintop in Topanga in the wild. And he, I'm like, what do I do? He's like, you know, eat these mushrooms. You'll go to sleep. You'll wake up. You know what to do. And I was like, all right. And then um, I, uh, I did that. I, I was sleeping on this platform um, and in my sleeping bag and I, I go to sleep and I wake up you know, like 45 minutes later or something and I'm just in a full on Alex Gray painting like the sky is full of eyes, I, like hero, hero dose, right? And, and just like fully could see through my body, could remember past lifetimes, like just, and I just remember, crying and laughing so much because I remembered for the first time in this lifetime that I was spirit, that I was not just this body, this person, but I was spirit. And um, that was really life-changing, man. That, that was, you know, I, I feel like we've, we've gotten away from initiating people into spirituality. And, 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 and in a lot of ways, like we're now legalizing things, you know, and, uh, undemonizing things like mushrooms and ayahuasca and peyote and even like LSD or other medicines that are really powerful uh, medicines to remind us or to show us that there's so much more. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it doesn't mean that you need to do it every single day. It doesn't mean that, you know, you become addicted to this feeling as, as anyone knows who's done uh, you know, psychedelics, you don't want to do that every day. <laughs> yeah, be a lot. But as a sort of a, a breakthrough and a reminder, that was huge for me. And so basically, um, ever since then, you know, and I've had a spiritual practice, a daily spiritual practice of, of meditation, prayer, visualization. And, and then later in my uh, early 20s, I discovered breath work. 
I was very dedicated to Kriya Yoga for many years. At one point, I had a five-hour-a-day practice of two hours of Kriya, three hours of Ashtanga. And, uh, you know, it was extreme for sure. And then also it was kind of very rigid, like I needed to be in a rigid practice. And then the last several years really has just opened up to being in discovery, like what I talked about just earlier, instead mm. of in this masculine rigidity, rigidity of like, I'm gonna do it this way and wow. More like, well, what's the universe showing me, right? How is she guiding me? And now it's just been about that. And that's where pyramid breath work came from is what I'm teaching my breath work. And, uh, or really it's, it's not my breath work. It just came through me. I'm just the, the mouthpiece for it. And um, it's ancient technology, you know, it's powerful stuff. And so now I'm just in discovery of more and more all the time of what's wanting to come through, what's wanting to come through to serve uh, humanity and serve them, especially the masculine, even though I work with so many women too, but really bridging the gap, right? And then quantum leaping our understandings and, and being in discovery. Because I think for the masculine, especially being in the knowing is so safe and being discovered can be so uncomfortable and scary. Mm. And then when we realize that the, the unknown is just infinite possibilities, it's just like, wow, you have all of, mm. instead of needing to know exactly what it is, taking away the needing to know and just being like in discovery. It's so simple and it's so powerful. It changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a little bit of my story. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it's amazing. And you know what, even, even just talking about, um, I, I guess the power of breath, you know, I, I remember one of the, the first like real breakthroughs that I, I ever had was through, um, through breath work where, um, just just that simple and it was such a fucking massive breakthrough for me to to actually realize that i've got this thing that's it's 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 breath you know and and that it's something that is is not something that i own you know what i mean and and it's like just that i remember i, I had this massive aha moment just about like realizing that the breath is just something that is is a gift that comes and goes you know and and it's like what 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 i find a, a lot of people that i work with who uh you know and especially men they they think that the importance and and they they identify with all these things in life that almost have uh such minute such little true value to to what they're really here to do and what they're really here to experience and then when they experience the simplicity of breath they're like what the fuck is going on like wow mm. like it's it's not mine but i'm given this thing every day and it's like fuck. and and you know you just see that transformation for such you know such minute things mm. and and it's like what you do I did one of your, um, you know, a month ago or whatever, I did one of your pyramid breath works on Instagram. And, uh, and I, you know, even for someone like me, who's been doing this type of work for 10, 15 years, it blew me away. Like I was feeling shit. I'm going, wow, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, dude, I mean, t tell us more about, more about that. I guess in a, in a way where if there's, you know, a, a a, a you know a, a guy or, or a dude or a, a man or whatever watching now who's mm. totally foreign to this shit you know yeah. like what what is it through this pyramid breath work what happens you know what 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 yeah. goes on yeah yeah it's a great question thank you um so glad you got to experience this a uh, small part of it too and um so let me just talk about a little bit what why I named it Pyramid Breathwork. And for me, pyramids represent some of the oldest, most powerful structures in the world. I mean, they, they've really stood the, the, the test of time. You know, there's powerful, mysterious structures. And they, to me, our identity is similar to that. How we think about our identity is like, we think we're this one thing. You know, we think that we're a dude, I'm a man, I'm this, I'm that, I'm from here, and therefore, and so we have all these beliefs in there, all these limiting beliefs, and it, you know, and then all the projections from all the other people, and so it creates this identity, 
that we're kind of trapped in. And so what pyramid breath does is it allows you to have a visceral experience of a dissolution of identity. And so you, you go to this place where who you think you are no longer exists. And you get to experience who you really are, which is divine presence, divine love. And you, you get this, like, you get to this DMT space, right? You get to, uh, you get to express your rage, your anger, whatever has been, you've been, what's been holding you back and holding you down and, and get to process so much. And so what I love about pyramid breath work is that it's not like, oh yeah, I think, no, yeah, I probably felt something. No, man, you fucking felt something. Yeah. And for, for us guys, it's so important because we're such uh dense creatures you know like oh dude i need like 18 beers you know and it's it's so it's that's like that like you will get hit with a hammer <laughs> you'll know it and in the most beautiful way you get to release into that you get to surrender into that and it's a visceral remember that's what i love about it is like for me every day when i practice it, it's a visceral remembering of who i really am Mm. I don't have to think that I am that I am that I get to experience it. Yeah. And, you know, there's different layers of it, obviously. And there's also the layer of really awakening the, the sacred masculine sexuality. So you're taking, cause we work in pyramid breath. We really work with um, the opening the, I call it the pony and it's the perineum for the Yoni, you know, ladies call it the Yoni. I named yeah. pony for us dudes. And it's like really bringing that energy up into the spine, into the body, into the heart, into the brain. And so the channel opens up and all of a sudden it's like, you know, you're as a man getting to express that powerful force and really initiating Shiva Shakti, which is initiating that sacred energy of Shakti energy of that feminine creative force within our container or the, the Shiva. And, you know, if you've, if you guys have seen the pictures of Shiva sitting there and sort of this flame around, you know, which is the Shakti energy. And it's just really awakening our, awakening our Kundalini energy, awakening our divine potential, and then getting to show up in the world. Like people feel your presence differently because mm. you just open up. You're not trying to be this contracted idea of yourself. Rather, you're moment to moment meeting the universe with where you are, uh, you know, fearless. And even when you're experiencing fear, still like opening into it. So Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? The interesting thing is, and uh, like, I mean, I've experienced this definitely in my life as well in terms of, you know, sexuality for a man. It's, uh, it's interesting because it's like the only muscle that you can't actually control in your body. What I find is, you, is your fucking dick right and and i reckon i mean because i've been through this before in my life where you know i've been in situations where i, I feel like this manly fucking dude and my dick's rock hard and i'm like yeah you know going for it and i'm like yeah i'm the fucking man da, 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 da. but you know and I, I don't know if all men are like this maybe some aren't but i know when i'm not connected i literally I, that shit doesn't work you know yeah. and and it's like as soon I remember the first time I couldn't get a hard on, I was like, fuck man, this is it. Like what, <laughs> what? I'm like, I'm done. Like, you know, I'm never going to be able to fuck again. I'm, you know, chicks are going to hate me. I'm like, Oh my God, is this end? Fuck it. Wow. And then it's like, I realized that this connection that we have to, you know, to our dick is, is like, it, it is, it's a, it's a fucking relationship, isn't it? And, and it's like, you know, you've got these things like, um, whatever the, the, like Viagra or whatever, all these things. And, and all that really does, cause I've taken that shit before because I'm like, you know, I just want to cover it up, cover it up. Mm. And all it really does is that it, it just pushes the, the pain and the trauma and what's really going on further down and it just gets worse and worse. So, really you know and, and i bet that there's a lot of men out there that probably struggle with the fact that they're not they don't have a a, a true relationship with their with their dick or their sexuality but they don't know what to do so they just cover it up you know so so it's like a, it's a it's quite a big thing to to be able to 
understand that connection. And dude, if you can do that through this pyramid breath work, I reckon you have fucking all of the men in the world going, give me some of that shit. <laughs> yeah, well, the, it's, I, I, it's funny, right? Because when you're a teenager, it's like you're just, you're you, whatever. You look at a painting and you get a, a boner, you know, or a tree or a whatever. And as we get older, you really realize that that connection is the most important. And for a lot of men, the story that we have been told or the patterning that we have followed or the modeling that we have followed is, is that, of, oh, it's just supposed to work. And like, if you're a dude, your dick is just going to get hard. And we're, we're not really understanding that our dick is really connected to our feelings. And when we can't or don't know how to express our feelings, man, that's the toughest part. And that's when you're going to try all these other tricks and things and be, become dependent and then you're you know it's a giant crush to your ego and to your identity because you're identifying as this like dude who always gets a boner and then it just it's just a, a spiraling down versus really learning how to communicate your feelings how to be open and vulnerable how to invite the, the that energy upwards and into your body and really for most men like we don't know that our whole body is orgasmic women don't know that either they're way more orgasmic than we are but it's all about down here it's like how do we activate right and how do we access our heart how do we how do we talk about our feelings how do we say hey um man it's just like the energy right is not moving right here maybe we'll do some breath together or you know oh shit that's gay man what the fuck like <laughs> you know and it's it's rather than the feminine whether you're gay, straight, or identify as whatever, Tantra works, which really just means awakened spirituality works. Awakened sexuality works. It doesn't need to be this thing where you're like just sitting across from each other, like eye gazing and nothing happens. Rather, it's how do we work with the sacred energies? How do we work with the sacred alchemy? You know, because within ourselves, we already have the Shiva Shakti, sacred alchemy. But when we're with a partner in this polarity, the only thing that blocks that polarity or that energy flow is when we don't know how to express ourselves. And for most dudes, me included, that's the part I left out. Like, I did not grow up knowing how to express myself. My nickname in high school was Iceman. Mm. Not because I was cool, because I did not know how to talk about my feelings and you know I was just trying to be on lockdown all the time and so it took me years and years and years until I was like in my mid-30s to kind of have major realizations around about around this and you know that's why now I teach communication because I don't know how this shit isn't taught in kindergarten and you know first second third grade no one knows how to talk to each other about their feelings it's awful and um and so that's another thing i think is a huge thing when it comes to sexuality is we need to learn how to express ourselves how to meet the feminine with our energy without puffing or shrinking because when we try to puff you're going to lose your boner you shrink you lose your boner it's only when we're moment to moment authentic in our expression and whatever comes through if you need to say wow part of me feels really scared right now or a part of me doesn't know what to do that's beautiful, right? Instead of just not saying it and pretending like, you know, and boner goes away, mm. you know? And so it's, it's just, it's so everything is connected, right? So if, you, if you're not completely connected, if you don't know how to express yourself, it's just, it's not going to perform. It's not going to work. And yeah. Dick is such a powerful indicator of where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's so true, man. And yeah, you know, I I know that uh, you know a lot of a lot of men out there would be would be going through that, and they don't talk about it because there's that fear of going. Fuck! Imagine if I tell my mates I can't get a boner, and then they're going, "Dude, the fuck are you talking about?" You know, there's always that guy that that's never ever had a problem, you know, expressing himself or whatever. But but it is it's it's quite a, a foreign. Uh, communication to have and it's uh, and, and even just having you know even just what you said over the last five ten minutes I, I reckon you know a lot of men will will get a lot out of that because really just talking about it 
is really going to create a, a little community for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so dude, with, with you have, have you ever been, I'm, I don't know, like, have you ever been in a place where you have been that guy that, that's going out, you know, you know, getting, you know, getting sloshed every, every weekend or just having a total d- dysfunctional lifestyle where mm. you were just totally in your own ego or self-centered or, or have you just sort of not been there ever? I, uh, you know, the one thing that's been very consistent with me throughout my life is that I've always had a spiritual practice mm. and, uh, have I had moments where I was way more unconscious than now? For sure. Have I had, you know, years of, of partying for sure. When I, I started drinking when I was 13 mm. and, um, you know, from 13 to 21, when I actually quit drinking for many years, for 16 years, um, I, um, I was a friggin' monster. Like I was out there partying and you know, I'd moved to New York. I was modeling and I was just, you know, going to clubs when I was 17 and traveling the world and a shit ton of money. It was amazing. And then uh, I, when I was 21 to support my best friend at the time, I quit drinking. He lasted two months. I lasted 16 years. And, uh, <laughs> and then um, in those 16 years, I, w- I was still every now and then sort of party or, or um, if the, go back a little bit. I, I did get pretty righteous. I think when I first, quit drinking I became that annoying person who was kind of like I like just <laughs> yeah. discovered also uh you know yoga in a whole new way and I was I was definitely that judgy guy you know I was like oh I'm better than you because I'm yeah. doing yoga and breath work and you're not and you're drinking and smoking <laughs> and uh, I think that went probably on for a couple of years um so uh and then you know as as it goes you you discover a balance after a while and then Throughout those years, I've definitely had moments where I've kind of been more interested in in partying. Alcohol has never really been that thing for me. It was more about maybe psychedelics or Molly was a big thing for me. Molly really opened my heart because for me, again, coming from Northeastern Europe, you don't talk about your feelings. Mm. You do not talk about your feelings. It's not part of the culture, you know, and so that medicine for me, MDMA, really um, helped me, really helped me to see what's possible, that you can touch another person, another man, for example, and just hug and love him, even though I'm straight as a fucking arrow, you know, to, to feel this connection and not have it be weird. Tell another brother that you love them, you know, or another human, anybody, and to, to, to feel that vulnerable, beautiful opening. And so for me, for a long time, that was, I think, one of the only ways that I could be in that state, even though now I live in that state. In the last like six times that I've done Molly over the last like, I think like seven years, I've been like, oh, damn, this is kind of like a step down from where I live all the yeah. time. <laughs> because with the breath work and with the connection and with the, the language, with all the, the community that I've, I've created, or accumulated, I live that in that state consistently, and I get to go to those hallucinogenic states and to those massive rememberings of love and connection and experiencing it all the time without needing any external medicine. Mm. But the medicines were really helpful in showing me what's possible. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of. So are you saying uh, go out and do as many uh, mollies as, as you possibly can? <laughs> you know what I do say is is not necessarily go out and do it, but I would say it to 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 people is use it the way I think it was designed to use, which was really therapeutic, right? Yeah. And it, it's happening now again. I have friends who work for Maps, uh, and uh, or, or you know uh, using MDMA, using ketamine as a legal therapeutic um, uh, medicines and. For me to you know to recommend for people who really feel closed up to get some of their best friends or even family members together and just sit in the house, put on some music that they feel really good with, yeah, and you know, and go on a journey together of love and opening, get out some oil, give each other massages, like hell yes. Yeah. 
you know it heals years and years and years of unspoken trauma mm. like that you're crying you're holding each other i love you man yeah, I know. you know all the stuff you wouldn't be able to say because you made up a story that's not okay or you're angry or you're traumatized or you know whatever else there is you have a limiting belief that it's not possible because you viscerally haven't experienced it mm. and then when you do you go oh well when i kind of do that all the time you know yeah yeah love it dude so if there's um you know if there's a if there's a sort of a dude watching this and he's really connecting to to what you're saying but he's you know let's say he's at home, he's, he's got a wife and kids and he's just been in a, in a really fucked up place for the last five, 10 years. And he's, yeah. he's sort of sitting around going, man, I just, I just need to do something. Otherwise I just, I know my life's not heading in the right direction. And, and he's searching, searching. I mean, what, what sort of advice would you have for, well, even generally just for the, for the men of today, because, a lot of us are struggling, man. You know, like what, what, what's, what's some guidance from, I guess, from the clients that you've got and the people that you've worked with, but also your own journey. The biggest things I find, for one, I believe every man should have a spiritual practice. That includes a gratitude practice, a breathwork practice, meditation, movement. And within that practice, you know, there's sort of the safe way to do it. So very yogic way to do it. And I believe that there is a more express way to do it, which we're called to now where the sound release, you know, part of your practice could be going out in the woods and just screaming your face off. Mm. You know, in the pyramid breath, we do sound release every day. And it's, it's just so healing because you get to express your frustration, your anger, your fear, whatever else is happening in the moment and through sound, like animals do that. When animals experience trauma, they start shaking, right? They, they move their bodies. Yeah. Or, as kids, we do that. It's so important that we let the energy out. As men, we're taught to just suck it up, man. Man up. Man up. Which means... You know, shut up, deal with it. Don't make a big fuss of it. Just, just, just lock it up somewhere. And it literally causes us to then blow up, you know, anger things to drink, to avoid, uh, uh, to shrink or to puff. And we're we just, you'll know how to be expressed. So it's so important for men to find a practice that works for them. You know, that's what I teach. I, I teach uh, and share practices that are fun, easy, and, and simple to do. Doesn't take a lot of time. So the story's like, oh, dude, I don't have, you know, my practice every day is, is long. You know, it's, it's probably over an hour, but all you need is like five, 10 minutes. Mm. And you can have a powerful experience with yourself. That's one thing. Another thing is you got to find brotherhood. You got to find dudes out there, you know, men's circles. And we're actually creating one right now as well over here. And you got to find brothers. And now it's even easier because of Zoom and these other platforms. Men that are willing and wanting to step into this new masculine. When I was um, moderating the men's group for my dear friend, Layla Martin, who's one of the biggest um, Tantra coaches in the world. It was so wild for me to remember that I, I kind of live in a bubble here and I, you know, have this amazing community. Men had, who were kind of in the middle of the country or other parts of the world were like, I have no guys to talk to. You know, I'm doing this Tantra course with my wife. She has all these women that she can connect with about it. I have no guys that I can talk to about a Tantra course I'm doing with my wife or my partner. And it blew my mind. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. Because I was like, what do you guys talk about? It's like sports uh, and uh, weather. Yeah. You know, and that's the depth of the conversation. Of course, you're going to be frustrated. So it's so important to seek out, um, you know, because now you can. You can connect all over the world with, with brothers and, and create a group even just create one. And, and uh, um, I would say um, the third thing is really just changing the mindset. Mm. Changing the mindset that we have been taught as men 
from needing to this idea that we needed to be in the knowing and instead of going from that letting that go letting that story it's just a story just just complete made up story into being in discovery which means your whole world can open up you don't need to know it's okay if you don't know it's good that you don't know because if you don't know you can learn you can discover and not be afraid of being in discovery because that's a big one for us you know because if we feel like we don't know something we feel like maybe we're dumb or we're not good enough or not this enough or that enough but really you've stopped yourself from growing you've stopped yourself from being with the flow of life the feminine will not trust you which means the world will not trust you because the world is a feminine expression of the divine you know we are the masculine consciousness and so the world will not trust you which means you're alone and you'll only attract people that are sort of in that in the codependent relationship with you where you don't talk about your feelings they're not going to talk about their feelings you're going to have beers watch sports and feel miserable yeah you feel you know? empty yeah and uh, the, feel empty. yeah and ultimately you you just won't trust yourself either exactly yeah yeah and and so what do you reckon will happen if if uh if that i do any of those things if you don't do any of those things well i think the the numbers at least in the states are really uh, spectacularly powerfully sad you know so many people are on anti antidepressants mm -hmm. um and and people are you know numbing themselves right people are drinking Eat, overeating, over drinking on antidepressants. Uh, they're not communicating. They're shooting up schools or whatever. You're killing themselves. Uh, you're in, in a basic in an abusive relationship with yourself. And so I think that you'll go to your grave full of regret. Mm. And, you know, a lot of times people say that when you have a near death experience, that's when you change everything. Right. And so let, death be a really, really powerful teacher. And there's this a beautiful exercise, which is place yourself on your deathbed right now. Imagine that you are dying. You've let, lived a long life and you didn't change anything. How do you feel laying on that deathbed, knowing that you have hours left? Like had you only had the courage when you were whatever age you are right now, to make that shift, that small step towards being in discovery from being in the knowing, being expressed versus being unexpressed, to try something new versus just keep doing what you're doing. It would have changed everything for you. Mm. The biggest regrets people say at the end of their life is, I wish I would have played more work less. I wish I had told my friends and family I loved them. I wish I would have traveled more. I wish I would have read more. I wish I would have experienced more. Not, I wish I would have worked more. I wish I would have talked. Yeah. That's about my feelings. You know, it's accumulated more stuff. Like, that's not where it's at. So it's a really, death for men especially is a really powerful teacher. And so imagine that tomorrow or a week from now, you would die. What would your friends say about you? What would your family say about you? How, you know, not that you're trying to live up to this like cool idea of yourself, but will they have felt the full power and presence of your love and your heart? Will they have really known you? Will they really miss your presence and your love because you're so trustworthy, you know, in, in all of your colors and all of your shades, all of it together, not needing to be this, just this dude, but like they, they've seen you cry, they've seen you process, they've seen you happy, they've seen tears, they've seen all, all the, the flavors and colors of you, you know? Not, only then will you have truly lived. So that would be my message, that's the why, you know? Yeah, dude, so cool. So, so cool. So how do, I mean, how do, how do people work with you, man? Like if, if uh, you know, what, where, where, tell us how, how do people work with you? What, what happens? So uh, basically an easy way to find me is on Instagram at uh, Herb Johan. And then also I have a website uh, called mind primer, 
mindprimer.com. And um, I'm also in the process of just finishing my Pyramid Breath uh, workshop or pyramidbreath.com as well for people that just want to do a breath work and can practice with me daily i'm bringing that as an offering because i know for a lot of folks you just having somewhere to go to someone to do it with is really helpful it is for me that's why i like to practice with other people because it, it's you're holding yourself accountable you know and um so those are the uh, two good ways to find me basically is my website mindprimer.com instagram you can dm me find me uh, and uh, also pyramidbreath.com as well for pyramid breath work for having a spiritual practice. And uh, yeah, this is my passion. I love doing this, and I love <laughs> that, that the you know the brothers around the world are are waking up to this. But it's time. It's yeah, time. brother, so good, man. So cool chatting to you, man. It's like it is. It's it's really is. It's like an honor, isn't it? When you when you just see that there's. Uh, the, the men are fucking waking up. It's just, it's just inevitable. And, uh, and, and, you know, it, it's a blessing and a curse, but you know, what, what I, what I see is, is that, um, you know, there's this new breed of men coming through and, and who are really becoming the king of their domain. Mm. But all you really have to do is just step up to experience and get the opportunity, get the potential but if you don't, you're fucked. Like you're going to be left behind. Yeah. 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 Mm. It's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful opportunity. And that's the thing about this work that we're talking about. It's never too late. Yeah. Never too late. You know, that's another story that I hear, right? It's too late. I have too much this, too little that, blah, blah, blah. If you died tomorrow, mm. how would you feel? You know, let death be a powerful reminder because it's going to come. And yeah. I don't want to have any regrets when that day comes, whenever it is, whether it's, you know, later today or tomorrow or a hundred years from now, I don't want to feel like I didn't do, I didn't live up to my potential of being open, vulnerable, trustworthy, helping my brothers and sisters and showing up in the world. And it doesn't mean that you need to build an empire. Hmm. It just means that when people see you, they meet you, they feel you, they feel your heart. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, imagine how annoying that would be if you get to the end of your life and before your last breath, you just sit back going, fuck, what a waste that was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Dude, thank you so much for chatting to me, man. I, I know a lot of people thank get you. a lot out of it. So you're a fucking machine and I love you. <laughs> yeah, thank love you so you. much, man. <laughs>